بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أب القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك وعلى أهل بيتك المظلومين صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة يا ليتنا كنا معكم فنفوز فوزا عظيما for the love of Imam Al Hassan Al Mujtaba, Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. <coughs> the seventh of Safar marks the martyrdom anniversary of the second Imam of Ahl al Bayt, Imam Al Hassan alayhi salam. This great Imam who played a very instrumental role in building the religion of Islam with his grandfather Rasulullah, his father Amir al-Mu'mineen, his mother Fatima, and his brother Imam al Hussein. This is Imam al Hassan, who is the first grandson of Rasulullah, the first son of Amir al-Mu'mineen and Fatima al-Zahra alayhum salam and he is the one who Rasulullah says about him, Al Hassan wal Hussein, Sayyida Shababi Ahl al Jannah. Hassan and Hussein are the masters of the youth of paradise. In another hadith of Rasulullah, he says, Al Hassan wal Hussein, Rayhana Taya min al Dunya. Hassan and Hussein are my two flowers in this dunya. And Imam al Hassan is a part of the Ahl al Bayt that were purified in the Quran. Innama yurid Allah li yudhiba ankum al rijsa Ahl al Bayt wa yutahirakum tathira. He was purified by Allah in the Quran. And Imam al Hassan, he is one of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered all Muslims to show mawadda to, to love and obey and show compassion towards. By saying, قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى Say, I do not ask for anything except mawaddah, love and obedience to the qurba, to the family of Rasulullah. Imam al Hassan was one of those who on the day of Mubahala, in the event of Mubahala, Allah orders Rasulullah to bring him out so that the world sees the position of Imam al Hassan along with his brother and his mother and his father. When Allah says in the Quran, فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ The Abna'ana were the children of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein. And this is why Rasulullah says, Al Hassan wal Hussein, they are my children, but they are from the sulb of Ali ibn Abi Talib. They are from the back of Imam Ali, but they are my children. And the Quran considers Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein 
to be the children of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. In this verse, the verse of Mubahala. Because they were the grandchildren of Rasulullah. So Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, his life is filled with lessons. He, his life can be divided into three categories. The first is with his grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The second is after Rasulullah all the way until his imama. And the third is during the time of his imama, during the time of his leadership. And at every level of the life of the imam, there are many lessons that are to be learned. You see that during the time that he was living in the house of Rasulullah, the house of Imam Ali and Fatima, he was living and his grandfather Rasulullah would come and visit them. His father and his father, his father and his mother, they were there. And it was that Ahl al-Bayt, Imam al-Hasan was included. It was that family that used to feed the orphans. It was that family that used to sleep hungry. Imam al-Hasan was included. Sleeping hungry for three nights to give the food to the poor and the prisoner and the orphan. This is the Ahl al-Bayt alayhum salam. It was Imam al-Hasan who used to witness his mother, Fatima al-Zahra, in the mihrab doing dua. Every Thursday night, he says, I used to hear my mother Fatima. She would go in the mihrab and she would do dua until her feet would swell. And then he says, the whole night I hear her doing dua for the neighbors, this person and that person. So he tells her, oh ummah, oh my dear mother, I see you doing dua for this person and that person and you did not mention the family. He says, she would tell me, Oh my dear son, ya bunay al-jar thumma dar You do the dua for the neighbor and then you do dua for yourself. And it was that lesson that Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam learned and Imam al-Hussein learned and all of the Ahlul Bayt learned to sacrifice for the sake of humanity, to sacrifice for the sake of people. They learned that from their father, from their mother, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. It was that household that Imam al-Hasan was born in, that Imam al-Hasan was raised in, that was a household of dua, a household of prayer. Allah describes in the Quran, fi buyutin adhinallahu an turfa'a wa yuthkara fi hasmuh. The homes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed to elevate and the name of Allah is remembered in these homes. This is the house of Imam al-Hasan. This is where Imam al-Hasan grew up in. And then his father passes away. His, and then his grandfather Rasulullah passes away. And then shortly after his mother Fatima al-Zahra passes away. And then he's living under the leadership of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And he witnesses all of the oppression that takes place towards the Ahl al-Bayt. Immediately after the death of Rasulullah. He witnesses how the Ummah neglected the family of Rasulullah, the very family that the Qur'an and Rasulullah ordered people to love and follow after his death. He witnessed all of that. He witnessed how his father Amir al-Mu'mineen was left in the home. And then Abu Bakr came to power, Umar, Uthman, and he began to witness the corruption that was taking place in the ummah in front of him. The ummah that his grandfather had united, he began to see it fall apart. Where a man like Marwan ibn al-Hakam, a man like Marwan, this man Marwan, his father is al-Hakam ibn al-As. Al-Hakam, he was kicked out of Medina. He was kicked out of Medina. Rasulullah sent him to Ta'if. He used to make fun of Rasulullah. He used to walk behind Rasulullah making faces. Until one day Rasulullah says, Kun kadalik. This is how you shall be. His face stu stuck the way he was making fun of the Prophet. He would keep spying on the Prophet. He would go look inside the house of Rasulullah until Rasulullah tells him, Go. You're not allowed to stay in Medina. Rasulullah was a rahmah to mankind. He kicked out Al Hakam. During the time of Uthman, he brings Al Hakam back because they were related. Bani Umayyah. They were related. He brings him back. And Marwan, the son of Hakam, 
he becomes the pers the closest person to Marwan to Uthman and the reason that the Muslims attacked Uthman and they killed Uthman was because of Marwan. Imam al Hassan he comes and he witnesses all of this in front of his eyes. And Marwan became one of those individuals who would harass the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. Harass Imam al Hassan. Imam al Hassan he saw all of this in front of him. And then the Khilafah came to Amir al Mu'mineen. Once it comes to Amir al Mu'mineen, he witnesses all of the battles and all of the struggles that Amir al Mu'mineen has to go through. The battle of Jamal. And Amir, Imam al Hassan played a very important role in the battle of Jamal. Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, she waged a war against Imam Ali after they had given bay'ah, her and Zubair and Talha and some of the others. Marwan was also included. She was on a camel that was protected by men. It was being protected by these men and they were fighting and surrounding this camel. Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, he takes the sword and he goes in. He was able to go through all of those men that had protected the camel and he strikes the camel on its legs and he brings it down and the war was over. He was able to end the war through that act that he did and then they take Aisha with full respect with her brother Muhammad and they take her under the supervision of Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. They take her back to Medina and they tell her, you are the wife of the Prophet. You're not supposed to go and wage war against the Imam of your time. And then after the battle of Safin, Imam al Hassan witnessed that. And it was in these battles, in the battle of Safin, they narrate that Amir al Mu'mineen, he was very careful. He would not allow Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein to go out in the middle of the battle. He was worried for their lives. These are the children of Rasulullah, his children. But they are also the imams. They are the, they are the sons of the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, the sons of Fatima. So he sees his son, his own son Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya, from his wife al Hanafiya. He tells Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya, go out in the middle of the battle and fight. Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya, he comes to Amir al Mu'mineen. He tells him, oh father, you're not letting Hassan and Hussein go out to the war and you want me to go out. What's the difference? Amir al Mu'mineen tells him, Hassan and Hussein are my eyes and you are my hands. And I defend, I protect my eyes with my hands. These are the children of Rasulullah. Hassan and Hussein are the connection with Rasulullah. This is. How Amir al Mu'mineen cared for and loved and used to respect Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein, even though they were his children, but because of his love for Rasulullah, because of his love for Fatima, and because of who they were as well. Because they were individuals, they were leaders, and Imam al Hassan was the second in command during the time of Amir al Mu'mineen. In the battles, wherever it is, it was Imam, Imam al Hassan, he would help and he would be. The right hand of his father Amir al Mu'mineen. This was one part of the life of the Imam, and another was after the death of Amir al Mu'mineen, after the martyrdom of Amir al Mu'mineen, when all eyes turned towards Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, and he is the legitimate leader that is appointed by Allah, appointed by Rasulullah, and appointed by Amir al Mu'mineen. But of course, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam was living in a very difficult time. Very difficult time. Where he would see the Shias, people who claim to be Shias followers, they would disperse and they would not protect their own Imam. Just like they did not protect the life of Amir al Mu'mineen, they would not stand for Imam al Hassan. And on the other side in Sham was Muawiyah, a man who was ready to wage war against Imam Ali and he was ready to wage a war against Imam Al Hassan and a battle was supposed to take place until Imam Al Hassan he realized that Muawiyah has a plan to have Imam have the people with Imam Al Hassan they hand over Imam Al Hassan to Muawiyah he goes and he began to give money he began to distribute money 
You know, money is a very important resource. And a lot of people, they forget all of their principles, all of their values for the sake of money. People forget. You know, they tell them this is right and this is wrong, but then someone comes and offers them money, they forget all about it. So some of the closest people to Imam al-Hasan, one of them was Ubaidillah ibn al-Abbas. Abbas is the uncle of Rasulullah, the uncle of Amir al-Mu'mineen, the brother of Abdullah ibn Abbas. He was supposed to be one of the generals, one of the commanders in the army of Imam al-Hasan. But Muawiyah paid him money and Ubaidullah ibn al-Abbas, he was ready to hand over Imam al-Hasan. So Imam al-Hasan, he had people who were hypocrites, people who were after dunya in his army. And he realized that this is not a good army to go and face Muawiyah with. Imam al-Hasan was never worried about his own life. He did not want to be handed over to Muawiyah in that way. So Imam al-Hasan, he made a truce, a treaty with Muawiyah. And because of that, some of the Shi'as, some of the so-called Shi'as, they turned against Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, questioning why the Imam made a treaty, did not go to war with Muawiyah, even though Rasulullah made treaty and was, he made truce with the Kuffar, the Hudaybiyah treaty. And we have many examples where Sometimes the Imams, Amir al muminin he did not fight. He did not go to war either. So some people, they came and they began to criticize Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam. And they began to attack Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam. And Imam al-Hasan, he secluded himself from power. And the last 10 years, 9 or 10 years of his life, he remained in Medina. He was teaching people. He was educating people. And... Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam became a role model through his akhlaq, through his virtues. People would come and they would attack him. People would come and they would curse at him. But the Imam alayhi salam, he is known for his hilm, the ability to control his anger. Despite people disrespecting him, the Imam alayhi salam, he had the ability to control himself and not show any anger towards people. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the people to have. وَالْكَاظَمِينَ الْغَيْظِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Those who control their anger, those who forgive other people, and Allah loves those who do ihsan. And Imam al-Hasan, he was the source of ihsan during his time. Imam al-Hasan was known for his generosity. Kareem Ahlul Bayt. Several times, historians mention that he gave all of his wealth, everything. He gave all of his wealth two times in his life. And he gave half of his wealth three times in his life. Who is willing to do that? Only the person who has full faith in Allah Azza wa Jal. Only the person who never questions Allah. Only the person who understands that everything that I have is from Allah. So what's wrong with giving back to Allah? A lot of times we don't give. We are afraid of giving because we have lack of faith in Allah Azza wa Jal. But if someone has faith in Allah, then they're going to give. Because you understand that everything that I have is from Allah. Everything is from Allah. So why should I be afraid? Why should I be shy from giving when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can reimburse me many times more? And this is what we learn from Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam. Inna al-Hasan alayhi salam kharaja min malihi marratayn wa qasam Allah malahu thalath marrat. He gave all of his wealth twice and half of his wealth three times in his life. One day Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, he has a farm and he sees that there is a servant in the farm who is eating a piece of bread and he throws a piece to a dog in front of him. He, eats, he takes a bite and he throws to the dog. The Imam alayhi salam, he comes to him and he tells him, he tells that servant, you are free in the way of Allah. 
You are free in the way of Allah. There were slaves at that time. He tells him, you're a free man in the way of Allah. And before you go, this farm also is yours. It belongs to you. So the Imam السلام, not only did he free the man, he freed him and he gave him the farm because that man fed a dog. Because that man was sharing his food with a dog. This is what the Ahlul Bayt teach us. This is what Imam Al Hassan السلام, teaches us. The generosity that the Imam السلام, has. But of course, Imam Al Hassan is oppressed. Imam Al Hassan was oppressed during his life, his whole life. Right after the death of Rasulullah, he, know, he witnessed how the Ummah turned against the Ahlul Bayt. They turned against his mother. They turned against his father. After the death of Amir al Mu'mineen, he was oppressed by the closest people to him. And until today, Imam al Hassan is oppressed, where his grave was raised with the ground. Over a, about a hundred years ago, the, the grave of the Imam was raised to the ground. Is this how the Ummah treats the family of Rasulullah? Is this what the family of Rasulullah deserve for all that they did for the Ummah? In addition to all of these harassments, Bani Umayyah, the Umayyad dynasty, and after them the Abbasi government, they came and they fabricated many ahadith, many narrations against Imam al Hassan. Bani Umayyah, obviously, because Imam al Hassan, he had issues with Muawiyah. So Muawiyah, he mobilized an army of propaganda to add a hadith, add narrations here and there against Imam Ali, against Imam al Hassan, Imam al Hussein, Fatima al Zahra, the Ahl al Bayt. And then after Bani Umayyah, Bani al Abbas, the Abbasi government, they came and they continued the same thing. Why? Because some of the descendants of Imam al Hassan, they had rebellions against Bani al Abbas. They fought against the Abbasi dynasty because of their corruption, because of all that they were doing. So the Abbasi government, they came and they paid people to have met false propaganda be waged against Imam al Hassan salam. They say, for example, one of the things they say about Imam al Hassan was that he was a matlaq, meaning that he, would, he was always getting married and divorcing, getting married and divorcing. And they say a very huge number in the hundreds where he got married and divorced. Now, if this has any bit of truth to it, you would see that Imam al-Hasan would have hundreds of children. But the children of Imam al-Hasan are all counted and most of them were killed on the day of Ashura. One of them, he survived on the day of Ashura. He survived and the descendants of Imam al-Hasan are from that child who survived on the day of Ashura. He was injured and he survived. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to protect the lineage of Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein, where one of the sons of Imam al Hassan survived and one of the sons of Imam al Hussein was Imam Zain al Abidin. But because of the, the children of Imam al Hassan, they waged wars against Bani al Abbas. So they, in return, they had all of these propaganda against the Imams alayhim salam and against Imam al Hassan specifically. But Imam al Hassan was always patient. He was always halim. He always forgave people. One of the so called Shi'as, one of those individuals who was a Shi'a, but at that moment he went and he tells the Imam, Assalamu alayka ya mudhill al mu'mineen. Peace be upon you, O oh, one who humiliated the mu'mineen. Now, what is the Imam السلام, supposed to do? The Imam, he tells him, he explains to him exactly why he had to do the treaty with Muawiyah. And he tells him, if I had individuals, if I had real men that would stand with me, I would not have done that. But the problem is, I didn't have anyone to stand with me. Similarly, Amir al Mu'mineen, right after Rasulullah, all of those people that had given bay'ah, they all neglected Imam Ali. So Imam Ali. Some people, they come and they say, why didn't Imam Ali fight? Imam Ali, he didn't fight. He sat in his home for over two decades because he didn't have anyone to support him. Imam al Hussein he had a handful of men to support him and they were ready to die for him. This is why he went forward. But the other Imams, they didn't have that. 
They didn't have a handful of men that were ready to be with them, to support them. This is why the Imam السلام, was oppressed by the closest people to him and the far people. A man comes from Sham, from Damascus, and he begins to curse at the Imam. السلام. The Imam, he looks at him and he tells him, It seems that you're a stranger. It's as if you are a stranger, you're not from here. If you need a place to stay, come and stay with us. If you need food, come to us. If you need anything, come to us, we will give you. The man began to cry and he says, Allahu a'lam haythu yaj'al rasalatah. Allah knows exactly who becomes the true leader. It's people like you that deserve the khilafah. However, the Imam alayhi salam, he was poisoned. He was poisoned. Muawiyah, he realized that as long as Imam al-Hasan is alive, then he's threatening Muawiyah. Even though Imam al-Hasan conceded the official power, the khilafah, the official rule, although we believe Al-Hasan wa Al-Husayn, Imaman, Qama or Qa'da, they are Imams, even if they don't have the political leadership. But Muawiyah, he couldn't tolerate Imam Al-Hasan, so he writes a letter to the Emperor of the Roman Empire at that time, in Constantinople. He writes, he writes a letter, he tells him, I want you to send me the most severe type of poison that you have, the, le the most lethal poison that you have. So the emperor, he writes a letter back to Muawiyah. He tells him, we have, a, we have a type of poison that is muharram in our faith, in our Christian faith. It's so lethal that we don't use it on anyone. It's haram upon us. So Muawiyah, he writes him a letter. He tells him, Yes, but you know who I will be using it against? I will be using it, using it against the grandson of the man who is defeating the Christianity. The grandson, the grandson of Muhammad. That's who I'm using it against. So this man, the emperor, he sends the poison to Muawiyah. And Muawiyah, he gives the poison to a lady. She was the wife of the imam from a wicked family. And sometimes Allah in order to test the Imams and the Prophets. Some of the Imams and the Prophets, they were married to wicked women, like the wives of Nuh, the wife of Nuh and Prophet Lut. They were, they were Prophets, but their wives were wicked women. Imam Al-Hasan also the same thing. This lady, Ju'dah bint Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais. And this is a cursed family. One of her brothers, he kills Muslim ibn Aqil. Another one, he attacks Imam al Hussein on the day of Ashura. And her, she goes and she poisons Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam. And the father was also one of the hypocrites who gave Imam Ali a very hard time. This was the cursed family. Ju'dah bint al-Ash'ath ibn Qais. Muawiyah, he promises her. He tells her, poison Hassan, and I will allow you to marry my son Yazid. And I will give you money and wealth. So she goes and she poisons Imam al Hassan. She puts the poison in the food of the Imam alayhi salam. And after doing that, she goes to Muawiyah. She tells him, give me what you had promised me. He tells her, yes, I will give you the money, but I will not allow you to marry my, to marry my son Yazid. Because if you were a lady that kills the grandson of Rasulullah, then how can I trust that you're not going to kill Yazid? And who is Yazid and who is Imam al Hassan? But this is what she did. She poisoned the Imam alayhi salam. And the Imam, he laid and he began to vomit all of that blood that had, that had accumulated in his stomach. And he began to say his will until the Imam alayhi salam passed away on the seventh of Safar. And the Imam alayhi salam, the oppression towards the Imam continued. Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, he tells in his wasiyah, he tells his brother Imam al Hussein, he tells him, I want you after I pass away to wash me and put the kafan around me and bury me next to my grandmother Fatima bint Asad 
But before doing so, I want you to take my body next to the grave of Rasulullah. So I say my final farewell to Rasulullah. And there, Imam al Hussein, he had taken the body of Imam al Hassan next to the grave of Rasulullah, Marwan. And the wife of the Prophet, she came out and she says, Take away from my house the one who I do not like. Imam al Hassan, the one who Rasulullah is his grandfather, he's from the Ahl al Bayt. She comes and she says, Take away from my home the one who I do not like. And according to the narrations, they began to shoot the body of Imam al Hassan with arrows after he was killed. And then Imam al Hussein, he goes and he takes him to the Baqi' and he buries him where he's buried now. This is the oppression that took place towards Imam al Hassan alayhi salam. But today, with the last few minutes, I want to talk about the will of Imam al Hassan alayhi salam. The wasiyah of the Imam alayhi salam, who the Imam in that difficult situation, he was poisoned and he was vomiting blood. One of his companions by the name of Junadah ibn Abi Umayyah, he enters on the Imam alayhi salam. دخل جنادة ابن أبي أمية على الإمام الحسن المجتبى عليه السلام عائدا له عيادة المريض عائدا. He's visiting the Imam when the Imam was sick. فالتفت إلى الإمام قائلا عظني يا ابن رسول الله. He looks at the Imam and during those last moments he tells the Imam give me some advice O son of رسول الله. This is how you know that this companion is a devout companion who up until the last moment, he wants to take advantage of Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam. He wants to benefit from the knowledge of this great Imam. فَأَجَابَهُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ يَا جُنَادَهِ اسْتَعَدَّ لِسَفَرِكِ وحصل زادك قبل حلول أجلك واعلم أنك تطلب الدنيا والموت يطلبك. He tells him, O oh, Junada, استعد لسفرك. O oh, Junada, be prepared for your journey. Be prepared for that journey, that difficult, lonely journey that every single one of us has to take. وَحَصِّلْ زَادَكَ قَبْلَ حُلُولِ أَجَلِكَ And collect everything you're supposed to take with you to the afterlife before the hour of departure arrives. Make sure your bags are packed. And Allah says exactly what everyone should take. وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى If you want to take anything, then take piety with you. وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ تَطْلُبُ الدُّنْيَا وَالْمَوْتُ يَطْلُبُكَ And know that you are seeking the dunya while death is seeking you. Israel, the angel of death, he's waiting for you. He's waiting for you and he comes by you and he is going after you. While I'm busy thinking of this dunya, thinking of my houses, thinking of my clothes, thinking of things that are finite, things that I have to separate from. You know, sometimes you see someone who's in the, a few days are left, but people are always attached to this dunya. I remember seeing a person who was dying. They had told him, you're going to die. People went to visit him. He says, yes, inshallah, I'm going to buy a house here and I'm going to do this, that. He was thinking, you still had this hope in this dunya. And this is human nature. So the Imam tells him, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ تَطْلُبُ الدُّنْيَا وَالْمَوْتُ يَطْلُبُكَ You seek dunya while death seeks you. وَلَا تَحْمِلْ هَمَّ يَوْمِكَ الَّذِي لَمْ يَأْتِي عَلَى يَوْمِكَ الَّذِي أَنْتَ فِيهِ He tells him, don't worry about tomorrow and worry about the day that you are in today. 
Don't worry about what's going to happen. A lot of us, we spend so much time worrying about how much I'm going to make in a year from now and how much I'm going to make at the end of the month, how much I'm going to uh, acquire. Worry about your day. This is one day Allah gave you. Who knows if you're going to be alive by tomorrow? Ask yourself, did I pray today? Ask yourself, did I do anything good today? Ask yourself, have I done anything that brings me closer to Allah today? Don't worry about tomorrow. وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ لَا تَكْسِبُ مِنَ الْمَالِ شَيْئًا فَوْقَ قُوتِكَ إِلَّا كُنْتَ فِيهِ خَازِنًا لِغَيْرِكَ And know that everything that you... Please, I don't need the echo. And know that everything that you collect in this dunya, all the wealth that you collect in this dunya, you're actually storing it for someone else. You're, o you're, actually, you're only storing it for someone else. A lot of the people you see when they die, you hear this person died with so much thousands of dollars. This person died with hundreds of thousands of dollars. What did they do with it? All that they were doing with it was storing it for someone else. Storing it for someone to come and spend it after them. They were not spending it. You know some people they have so much hirs. They have so much attachment to wealth that they don't want to even spend it. They just want to collect and collect. And then they're not even enjoying this life. At least enjoy what you have. Enjoy it in the halal. There's nothing wrong with that. وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ الدُّنْيَا فِي حَلَالِهَا حِسَابٍ وَفِي حَرَامِهَا عِقَابٍ وَفِي الشُّبُهَاتِ عِتَابٍ فَأَنزِلِ الدُّنْيَا بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْمِيْتَى خُذْ مِنْهَا مَا يَكْفِيكَ فَإِنْ كَانَ حَلَالًا كُنْتَ قَدْ زَهِدْتَ فِيهِ وَإِنْ كَانَ حَرَامًا لَمْ يَكُنْ فِيهِ وِزْرٌ فَأَخَذْتَ مِنْهُ كَمَا أَخَذْتَ مِنَ الْمِيْتَ وَإِنْ كَانَ الْعِقَابُ فَالْعِقَابُ يَسِيرٌ He tells him he tells him, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الدُّنْيَا فِي حَلَالِهَا حِسَابٍ وَفِي حَرَامِهَا عِقَابٍ And know that you will be held accountable for everything in this dunya. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ You do good, you will see it. And you do bad, you will also see it. So, فِي حَلَالِهَا حِسَابٍ وَفِي حَرَامِهَا عِقَابٍ If you do haram, you will see the punishment for that haram. And then he tells him, وَفِي الشُّبُهَاتِ عِتَابٍ Some people, they go after the shubuhat. Something, they don't know this is halal or haram, but they keep going after it. They say, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's halal or haram. So if you don't know, then there's going to be itab. You're going to be reprimanded. Be careful. Don't fall into sin. Don't go and eat everything that you see in front of you. Don't go and take everything that you see in front of you. Many things are mixed with haram. Do you want your wealth, your food, your sustenance to be mixed with the haram? And then he tells him, فَأَنزِلِ الدُّنْيَا بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْمِيْتَ Consider this dunya like the dead animal. You found a dead animal that was hit by a car. And you're starving. You have to eat. How much are you going to go and eat from that animal? You're going to go and eat very little just to survive. You're not going to go and have a feast off a dead animal. You're going to just take enough just so that you could survive. So he tells him, he tells him, consider this dunya that it's a mita. خُذْ مِنْهَا مَا يكفيك. Take from it just enough. Enough for you. Don't, you don't need to go after this dunya. فَإِنْ كَانَ حَلَالًا كُنْتَ قَدْ زَهُدْتَ فِيهِ If it was halal, then at least you know you did not do something wrong. You are zahid. You're not attached to this dunya. And if it was haram, you only took from it what was sufficient from you and Allah will not hold you accountable for that. You only took what will keep you surviving.
And then the Imam alayhi salam, he tells him, وَعْمَلْ لِدُنْيَاكَ كَأَنَّكَ تَعِيشُ أَبَدًا وَعْمَلْ لِآخِرَتِكَ كَأَنَّكَ تَمُوتُ غَدًا O oh, Junada, work for this life as if you have forever to live, as if you have nothing to lose, but work for the afterlife as if tomorrow you're going to die. If someone tells you tomorrow, tonight is your last night on this earth, what are you going to do during these hours? You're going to pray. You're going to make sure whoever you oppressed, you went and you talked to them. You sorted out your issues because you know you're going to leave this life. And don't worry about your risk. Don't worry about your sustenance. Don't worry about the wealth. Don't worry about everything. Work for this life as if you have forever, you have nothing to lose. But work for the afterlife as if you have everything to lose. And then he tells him, وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ عِزًّا بِلَا عَشِيرًا وَهَيْبَةً بِلَا سُلْطَانًا فَخْرُجْ مِنْ ذُلِّ مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ if you want to have the glory, if you want people to respect you, you want people to respect you, but you don't have the family. And you want people to honor you, but you don't have the power, the Sultan. How do you get that? Fakhruj. مِنْ ذُلِّ مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ إِلَىٰ عِزِّ طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ Save your soul, rescue your soul from the humility of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know those who disobey, they're humiliated in this life before the afterlife. The one who lies, the one who cheats, the one who steals, the one who murders, they're humiliated in this life. No one wants to be around this person. No one likes this person. But the one who honors and stands for principles and values. Everyone li loves this person. Everyone likes this person. And this is what the ta'a of Allah, this is the, the obedience to Allah, this is what brings you. It brings you izzah bila ashira, wa bila sultan. And then he tells him, وَإِذَا نَازَعَتْكَ إِلَىٰ صُحْبَةِ الرِّجَالِ حَاجَةِ فَاصْحَبْ إِذَا مَنْ صَحِبْتَهُ زَانَكْ وَإِذَا أَخَذْتَ مِنْهُ صَانَكْ وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ مِنْهُ مَعُونَةً أَعَانَكْ وَإِنْ قُلْتَ صَدَّقَ قَوْلَكْ وَإِنْ صُلْتَ شَدَّ صَوْلَتَكْ وَإِنْ مَدَدْتَ يَدَيْكَ بِفَضْلٍ مَدَّهَا وَإِنْ بَدَتْ مِنْكَ ثَلْمَةٍ سَدَّهَا وَإِنْ رَأَى مِنْكَ حَسَنَةٍ عَدَّهَا وَإِنْ سَأَلْتَهُ أَعْطَاكْ وَإِنْ سَكَتَّ عَنْهُ ابْتَدَأَكْ He tells him, and if your soul wants to find a friend, وَإِذَا نَازَعَتْكَ إِلَىٰ صُحْبَةِ الرِّجَالِ حاجة. If you have to go and be a friend with someone, فَاصْحَبْ Be with the person, مَنْ إِذَا صَحِبْتَهُ زانك. When you are friends with this person, this person will be a decoration for you. زانك. He's a zina for you. Sometimes people judge you by the people that you walk next to. People judge you by the people who you spend time with. If you are spending time with a good person, people will say, MashaAllah, this person is talking to a good person. This person is spending time with a good person. وَإِذَا أَخَذْتَ مِنْهُ صانك. And if you took from him, he will protect you. He's not going to come and say, yes, I gave this person. He came and he asked me and he's going to humiliate you in front of other people. وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ مِنْهُ مَعُونَةً أَعَانَكْ 
And whenever you go and you ask him for something, he will help you. He will be there for you. This is the point of a friend. Otherwise, some people, they have thousands of friends on Facebook. Are they helping them? Are they doing anything for them? A real, you could have one friend which is better than thousands of friends on Facebook. The real friend is the one who's going to stand with you, the one who's going to help you in times of difficulties. وَإِنْ قُلْتَ صَدَّقَ قَوْلِكَ And when you say something, he will believe you. He will listen to you. وَإِنْ صُلْتَ شَدَّ صَوْلَتُكَ And if you are fighting, if you have a mission, you're doing something, he's going to be there with you in your mission. وَإِنْ مَدَدْتَ يَدَكَ بِفَضْلٍ مَدَّهَا And if you are asking for help, he will also help. If you are doing something to help people, بِفَضْلٍ He will also join you. He will join hands with you in helping people. وَإِنْ بَدَتْ مِنْ كَثَلْمَةٌ سَدَّهَا If you did something wrong, He will come and cover up for you. He will protect you. وَإِنْ رَأَى مِنْ كَحَسَنَةٍ عَدَّهَا If He sees something good, He will count that for you. Some friends, so-called friends, when you do good, they don't remember that. But if you did one thing wrong, ooh, they're going to talk about it for the 20 years to come. So, the Imam alayhi salam, he says, a real friend, وَإِنْ, وإن رَأَى مِنْكَ حَسَنَةٍ عَدَّهَا وإن, س, وَإِنْ سَأَلْتَ أَعْطَاكَ If you ask him, he will give you. وَإِنْ سَكَتَّ عَنْهُ ابْتَدَأَكَ And if you don't ask, he will come and he will ask you, what do you need? How can I help you? This is a good friend. وَإِنْ نَزَلَتْ بِكَ إِحْدَى الْمُلِمَّاتِ و... If you are going through problems, he will be there for you. This is the will of Imam Al-Hasan while he was dying. These are the words of wisdom that the Imam السلام, was saying. Imagine someone who is in the last moments of his life and he was able to give out this type of wisdom. These are the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt السلام, The Imam he gathered his companions. He gathered his family and he tells them, this is my last hour. These are my last moments. He begins to tell them that Imam al Hussein is the Imam after me. Follow him and obey him and be with him. Imam al Hussein he began to cry when he saw that Imam al Hassan was leaving this life. Then Imam al Hassan he tells him, Ya Aba Abdullah, Atabki Alay. Oh, my brother Hussein, you are crying for me. Walakin la yawmaka yawmaka ya Aba Abdullah. However, there's no tragedy like yours, O oh Abba Abdullah. The worst of tragedies is your tragedy, and I cry for you, O oh Abba Abdullah. Then Imam al Hassan alayhi salam arak jabino wa sakana anino. وقال السلام عليكم يا ملائكة ربي. The angels, they came to him. He says, وَعَلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامُ O oh, angels of my Lord. His forehead began to sweat. Then the Imam alayhi salam, he does his shahada. He, sa he says his shahada and his soul departed his body. رَحِمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ نَادَى وَإِمَامَا وَمَظْلُومَا Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, he passed away on that day. And the narrations they say the day that Imam al Hassan passed away was like a day. It was a day of sadness in Medina, like the day Rasulullah passed away in, where all of Medina they came out crying for the Imam alayhi salam. Then Imam al Hassan, Imam al Hussein, he washed the body of Imam al Hassan and he carried the body and the body of Imam al Hassan 
He buried him after he had taken him to the grave of Rasulullah and they shot the body of Imam al-Hasan with arrows. Then he took him and he buried him in Baqi' next, next to the grave of Fatima bin to Asad. And then Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he stood over the grave of his brother Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, and he began to eulogize Imam al Hassan. He begins to say, Adhinu rasi am tatib majalisi. وخدك معفور وأنت تريب بكاء طويل والدموع غزيرة وأنت بعيد والمزار قريب غريب وأطراف البيوت تحوطه ألا كل من تحت التراب غريب فليس حريب من أصيب بماله ولكن من واسى أخاه حريب لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون. Let us raise our hands in dua by the love and glory and honor of Imam Al Hasan عليه السلام. نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله. يا الله 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 يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك ماحي السيئات إنك على كل شيء قدير وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب الفاتح مع الصلوات